I kept a journal and wrote everything down, all the medications, all the times, all the feeding times and everything like that because it was extremely helpful when I went and saw the nutritionist and the oncologist and they asking questions I was able to look up and make sure that everything was correct and above board and if, if any changes needed to be made, often that happened, I was able to record it immediately and remember it when I got home. But that, so all that you have to be prepared for, yeah. Use alarm clocks for the medicines. My, my cell phone every time it was alarming to advise me about the medicines because it's really important to, to deal with the medicines on the correct time. Um, and uh, it's not easy. You must be stronger than the person and uh, because you need to support them. So take care of yourself to take care of the other person. It's not easy kind to do, easy thing to do, but it can be possible. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> oh, I think if you don't have a plan, that's when, you know, things just don't work out. You get, you might arrive late or someone might be sitting in a waiting room waiting to be picked up or, we just planned it. We had, in our family, if I couldn't be there, then I would organise another family member to be part of it. And I think that's one of the things that made the whole experience not so bad because we'll, someone was spending time with her every moment of the day, every day. And, um, you know, a couple of times she sort of said, I just want to be on my own now. And I sort of thought, well, um, in, in light of everything, maybe you can't be. It's just, but I think yeah, that was the that the planning, calendars, uh, having sort of like a team meeting at some point about appointments, who's going to take who, who's driving, who's not, waiting. The downtime of waiting can get like really frustrating because if you're sitting there for two hours. Um, and all you want to do is go and lay down, you've got to sit the whole time, all that sort of stuff. So mum was a bit agitated. So a lot of the time we were just trying to pacify her. So we'd crack jokes and um, she would look at the books. And so just getting crosswords, uh, talking about the news, all that sort of stuff and not letting too much silent time pass because that's when they start getting agitated. Um, you're not going to have all the answers straight away. It's, it takes time um, and there's not a magic bullet that you just say, right, this is the, the playbook on how to care for someone and what you've got to do and where you've got to go. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think as you're going through it, you just want to get there a little bit sooner um, and just really just try and make sure that you just take a step back and just look at it in a practical way. What do I need to do? It's very difficult to take the emotion out of it, but that's what you need to do in order to get through it. And you just need to make the decisions. This is what we're doing, and this is how it's gonna happen. And you need to coordinate that with everybody around you, whether it's the kids have to get the dinner, your husband has to go and pick up the kids, or you know, you're not going to work today. Um, these are the decisions, and that's what's gonna happen. I think you have to um, just be uh, aware of their feelings and um, they get very tired so you've always got to make sure they're you know getting enough to eat and getting enough sleep and and not working too hard. John had to really cut back and, and hardly worked at all over the time probably from the start of, of it all really because it just um, once he had the operation um, he just, it, it just wore him out. He was so tired all the time. So I think you just have to make sure they're getting plenty of sleep, plenty of good food and, and plenty of fresh air. And, and um, we'd go for walks together um, to try and, you know, keep his mind, you know, at least a little bit active trying to do things together. And, um, but he, he was never really unwell which I think was the hardest thing, as anybody would know, that if you've got a partner that's well and then all of a sudden they're told they've got cancer, they virtually get sick, 
being treated. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's the hardest thing is to see somebody that's so fit, so well, visibly, all of a sudden they're really unwell. And, and it takes so much time to be well again. I think that's the hardest thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just being a support. I think that's all you can really do. Yeah, if you're spending lots, lots of hours sitting around, um, it's important that um, you keep occupied, whether it be reading. I tried reading, but I found it, I couldn't, it was too distracting with things going on. Um, I love, I love, I love um, sewing. I do a lot of hand sewing. And my, my passion is quilting. So I was able to have my little projects, little portable projects that I could take in on the days. And I would sit and do some hand sewing. And uh, I could still still talk while I was hand sewing, which is important not to be, have a nose in a book and uh, not, not, not talk. Also important to um, write things down, have a diary, whether it be treatments or whatever. We hit have doctors come in and, and, and talk about what was going on or what's going to happen. And so then I'd write that down and how I felt about that. Um, yeah, I think that that's important to keep yourself busy. I think it is important to have a hobby or something you can focus on while you're in there. So um, Tim and I have been trying to build a house for about five years. <laughs> it's been a long process. So we'd often bring in the laptop and house plans and we'd swapped and changed, oh, I think, I reckon four different houses at one stage and builders. And then when we finally um, were in a position that we could finally build our home, um, yeah, we pretty much just brought house plans and um, that kind of thing to go over. Most chemo sessions, we'd just sit down doing that. So I think it's important to have a, a project or something that you can use that time where you're not sitting there focusing on what's going around you, going on around you, focusing on something else or something positive or plan a weekend away. Or I think it's important to to do that. Otherwise, you just sit there and you kind of think, oh, well, you know, they're not feeling great because they've got chemo in or. Um, Often Tim would sleep as well, so it gave me something to do while he was sleeping. No, everything sort of went so so quickly, I suppose, like the, the radiation, um, you know, you, you got your time schedule, and, and that, some of those times would have been changed around. You didn't know that till the night, the day before, so they could have been busy or uh, the, one of the rooms might not have been functioning, so you, you changed it around, but it didn't, it does, somehow it just doesn't affect, it doesn't worry you. It doesn't, there's at least, uh, you know, it, it's just out of your mind. You you, you, um, you just do what you've got to do. It's, um, you know, it's, as I say, life is short and, you know, you just got to um, do whatever is best possible, whatever the treatments, you go by the doctors, uh, what they say, um, you know. Uh, so you know, we, we just you roll with it. You just roll with the whatever had to be done. You do it. You know, there wasn't any ifs or buts or no, I can't do this. I can't do that. I just had to do it. Um, I know some people might be difficult to to do it at times to do it, those sort of things, but you manage somehow. You just manage to to do it. So it's just amazing how you how. Um, things work out to, to manage to do these sort of things, yeah, for sure.